Before beginning installation of paired composite channels, take a moment to read all of the installation instructions first and familiarize yourself with all of the system's parts and components. This is extremely important because parts will become permanently damaged if they are installed incorrectly. There are several items that should be included. Item 1 is this videotape. Item 2 is a bill of materials that includes a drawing plan and hangar location drawing. Remember to check the bill of materials to ensure that all parts and components are present and undamaged. Parts and components may include some of the following. Straight and or curved channel segments in 4, 6, or 8 inch widths. Accessory angles. End caps. Narrow reveal, hanger bracket, spacers. And splices. In this installation, there are several other parts that we won't need to use. However, your project may require some of these other parts. They include accessible splices, wide reveal hanger bracket spacers, splice covers to dress field cuts, and intersection brackets. Now let's take a look at the suspension options available when installing paired composite channels. There are four options available. Here is a look at option 1, suspension with hanger wire. Here is a look at option 2, suspension with aircraft cable wire using a crimp connector. Here is a look at option 3, suspension with aircraft cable wire using a threaded connector wire. And here is a look at option 4, suspension with threaded rods. Now that we've looked at the various suspension options, we're ready for the basic installation process. There are 10 steps to this process. First, establish an X and Y baseline on the floor or ceiling following the diagram provided with your components. Baselines are typically referenced off a structural building element. Next, determine all of the hanger wire locations that have been indexed off the X and Y baselines. These markings indicate where the hanger brackets will be attached. Then, project each hanger location to the deck or structural ceiling and attach wires, cables, or rods with the appropriate fasteners. It's very important that all wires are plumb so as not to pull on the assembly. Bridge or trapeze accordingly with appropriate structural members. Now, attach the hanger brackets at the required height using hanger wire, aircraft cable, or threader rods. Then position one side of the paired composite channels on the floor by following their part identifications. Using the reference dimensions on the drawing, align the paired composite channels with the relative hanger wire locations. Now, transfer the hanger bracket locations to the top of the paired composite channels. These markings indicate where each hanger bracket will be attached. Then, begin attaching the first channel to the brackets by snapping the channel onto its corresponding hanger bracket. Start at an intersection, or if there is no intersection, then start near the middle of the assembly. The inside channel of a circle should be installed first. If the channels have intersection notches, make sure they line up. Continue on by referring to the shop drawing and adding additional hanger brackets. These will act as spacers that ensure uniform spacing between the channels. Now, attach the subsequent channels to the corresponding hanger brackets using splices to join them. Here are a few tips to keep in mind. Use splice covers to cover the channel joints that need to be adjusted for field conditions. Wall terminations can be installed by attaching a hanger bracket to the wall face with the appropriate fasteners and then snapping the paired composite channels onto the hanger bracket. Splice covers can be used to cover any slight gaps or uneven field cuts. Now we'll move on to the next phase of the installation process by installing the intersections. There are three steps to this part of the process. First, align the notches in the opposing channels as they are assembled on the hanger brackets. Next, attach a hanger bracket to the face of the notched composite channel using number 10 by one half inch metal screws. 
If it's a through intersection, attach hanger brackets on each side. Finally, snap the intersecting channels onto the hanger brackets and secure the channels to maintain a good intersection throughout installation. In the next phase of the installation process, we'll be installing the paired Composso channels corners. There are seven steps in this part of the process. First, attach standard splices to the outside corner unit and attach the corner unit to the installation. Then, snip the top and bottom flanges of the corner splice at the center and fold along the crease to a desired angle. Using the corner splice, join the pre-mitered inside corner channel segments to form the inside corner unit. Then attach this inside corner unit to the installation. Now, attach an end cap termination on both the inside and outside end segments. Note that there is a right and left end cap. To install them, hook them over the bottom flange, then bend them over the top tab. Then install the end segments to complete the installation. Depending on design, the channel ends may be aligned or offset. Refer to your shop drawing to guide you on this. Now, let's take a look at some special installations of paired composite channels. Here is an installation where the accessory angle is used to install flexible rail lighting with a concealed rail. And here's an installation where the accessory angle is used to install neon lighting. Here's another installation where the accessory angle is used to install track lighting. And finally, here's an installation where the accessory angle is used for ceiling attachment. That completes this video guide on the installation of the C-squared paired composite channels from USG Corporation. We hope that you found this presentation to be a useful resource throughout your Composso installation. If you need more information regarding these systems, you can reach us by calling one 800 usg for you Thank you for using our products and thanks for watching